What's good ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and today we are going to be going over my SECA scan results. Now for those of you who don't know who a, what a SECA scan is, I'm going to go over it very briefly. A SECA scan, S-E-C-A, uh, is essentially a new technology that can measure your body composition, right? So we've heard of these body fat calibers where you take a bunch of uh, skin folds and plug it into a calculator. I apologize, the camera's out of focus. So you have body fat calipers, you also have DEXA scans, which are seen as the gold standard. You lay down, this big machine will go over you, except it takes a while to do. And it's also pretty expensive, it's about a hundred bucks if you want the test done. Uh, you have underwater body weighing, camera's almost dead, this is very unfortunate. Um, and then you have this SECA scan. The SECA scan uses bioelectrical uh, bio impedance, which is something similar to those scales where you step on and it'll shoot electrical signals up your feet. And depending on how quickly that signal is conducted back down to the scale, it can measure your composition um, because your muscle and your adipose tissue and bone tissue and all these different forms of tissue actually radiate this electrical signal at different rates. Now, the caveat to this underwater weighing was that you could take the test when you're dehydrated and when you're hydrated with the exact same body composition and it would show vastly different results. With this SECA scan, uh, it uh, accounts for your hydration. So it's you know an attempt to at least solve or minimize the caveat of this uh, method. Now I weighed in just under 190 pounds. I'll overlay the PDF at about six foot. That makes me in the overweight category for my BMI. So, you know, I guess I have to start hitting the gym. Um, and then we could pull up our skeletal muscle mass per limb. This is what I was really interested in. Uh, obviously, you want more muscle mass in your torso than your legs and more muscle mass in your legs than your arms. That's what you see here. As far as the specific differences go, the people who conduct the test aren't really worried about it as long as your left and your right side are within half a pound of each other. Um, but overall, just under 80 pounds of skeletal muscle mass, which I am pretty happy for. Now, there's different measurements here. I don't know how much of them are going to be of interest to you guys. Um, but we can actually see on the first page, which I actually forgot to go over, fat mass was 17.4%. Overlay a video of what I look like currently at 190 pounds at six foot at 17.4% body fat. Now, a lot of you have unrealistic expectations, myself included, of what 17.4% body fat actually looks for. We have to consider, however, that this also accounts for not just subcutaneous fat, but visceral fat as well. Visceral fat is the fat that is deeper, right? So it's uh, in the organs, uh, that's so let me give you an example. So males tend to distribute body fat in an Android body style Which means from the waist up. That's why you can see a uh, Overweight individual or even an obese individual with a very hard gut. That's because that's visceral fat that is deep. It's compact um, Whereas females tend to display much more of an hourglass figure and they store uh, pre predominantly subcutaneous fat in their you know, hips and butt region, which gives them this dimpling effect. Um, and that's, I mean, the difference between male and female is pretty evident, right? Because they have to bear a child's life. Now, 17.4%, which seems like a lot, but it can vary roughly five to 10% either way, depending on how much of that is subcutaneous and how much of that is visceral. However, on this other test, it tells me that my visceral adipose tissue actually isn't that much at all. Um, so most of that is subcutaneous in, in my case, at least according to this test. And lastly, what I think you guys are gonna be interested in is my phase angle. Now, I didn't really understand what this meant, so I'm gonna go over it briefly. The phase angle takes into account your nutritional status, uh, your cell health, and all the other factors on these other two pages to determine how good your overall health is, how well you're going to recovery. Uh, now, it gives you a phase angle, minus 7.6 degrees. I think that's more so just a uh, measurement to compare to the percentiles, in which case I'm at 99th percentile, very happy with. 
Um, and then my resting energy expenditure is about 1,900 kilocalories per day. So if I lay in bed, I can burn 1,900 calories. That's pretty good for me. It means my metabolism's active. I can get away with you know, eating a lot still at this point. Uh, total energy expenditure, I would not pay much attention to that. That's gonna depend day to day based on how much you're actually doing as far as physical activity goes. Um, I wanted to go over this to kind of catalog where I am currently physique wise, but also give you guys a realistic expectation, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not a, you know, fitness model by any means. I'm just like you. I probably go to the gym more than you, but this is where I am right now, right? 17.4% body fat at 190 pounds at just shy of six foot. Okay. This is what I look like. Uh, I hope this video did provide some value to you. If it did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mentality and exercise videos coming out in the future. I will see all you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.